Mr. James from Charm City Karate here. Uh, this week I'm going to talk to you guys about mental preparations necessary for defending yourself. Uh, a couple episodes back I talked about whooping and how bad guys use that to uh, get themselves ready for a fight. You also need to be ready for a fight. Um, if you go in cold or you go in thinking about what happened at work that day or uh, an argument you got into with your girlfriend or you think about how cute your daughter looked something like that you're not going to win. It's going to be bad. You need to be mentally prepared to defend yourself. You will not always have time to do that spur of the moment. So you need to make those preparations. Now, some self-defense gurus, you know, the guys that advertise in Black Belt Magazine uh, and other such venues, usually way in the back, will tell you things like, you need to go animal and, and you need to be a psycho in a fight and things like that. Uh, I, I just don't believe that that's true and I don't think that it's really beneficial. Um, if you were in a combat zone like Somalia or um, the front lines in Afghanistan or something like that, maybe that would work for you. Um, but if you're a civilian and you go animal or psycho or whatever quaint little term they want to use, you might end up being in jail and then you're going to get to use your psycho or animal or whatever probably on a daily basis, which is not going to be that much fun. Or you get to use some other cute things like pick up the soap technique, which isn't going to be very much fun either. Um, If you're a fan of uh, the series Band of Brothers, or if you've read the books, uh, there's a guy in there named Dick Winters, uh, and there was an interview in the series with him where they asked him about the preparations that he was given and that they had to make before they dropped on D-Day. Uh, and he mentions in his interview that Physically, the Army did a great job of pre preparing them for what they were going to run into, the drop, the fighting, and all that stuff. But mentally, preparing yourself for combat, for killing someone, for what they had to do, he said, you know, there, there was no way to prepare another person for what they had to do you have to find a way to prepare yourself. Um, and, and what I think he's getting at is that you have to find a way to be at peace with the necessity of defending yourself. Um, it, you need to be comfortable with the fact that you will have to defend yourself and the ramifications of that. Um, and what that means is if if you do not think that you are worth standing up for, worth defending, you're lost right from the beginning. Years ago, I taught a self-defense class for a group of young ladies who were all sexually abused. Um, and they performed very well in the class. The thing is, after the class, we did a debriefing and talked to them and they all said well I don't know when I would ever use this because I wouldn't be able to fight back and we said well why not you, you fought back very well in the class against all of our instructors you did a great job and they said well it would be easier to just give in and let him do whatever he wanted we said, what are you talking about? He said, well, 
if we just let him do whatever he wanted, then it's over. And he'll just go away. So even though these girls got the skills that they needed to defend themselves, they didn't see themselves as worth defending. So they weren't going to use the skills. Okay? It, effectively, we'd given them a gun they would never draw. So mentally, they were not prepared to defend themselves. They weren't going to do it. It was a loss. So you need to realize that defending yourself, protecting who you are, it is not just a right that you have, it is a responsibility that you have. If you're a parent, that means that you have probably a spouse and you have kids that rely on you, they depend on you for love, attention, probably for money, for food, for shelter, all right? They need you. They expect you to be there. You have to defend yourself so that you can defend them and provide for them, all right? If you're a grandparent, you have two generations that are expecting that from you, okay? If you're married, you have a husband or a wife. You have that spouse that's defending depending on you to be there, to protect yourself, okay? Maybe you're the only person in your family that is capable of protecting anyone. That means that you have to protect your entire little tribe, okay? You better be ready, because if they can't do it, you got to hold the line while the rest of the tribe gets away. Okay, that doesn't mean that you can just collapse and let stuff happen. They depend on you. So you need to be ready for that. And you've got to realize that it is a responsibility as well as a right. You need to protect yourself so that you can provide for these people so that they can continue their lives. So even if you're not worth fighting for, these other people are. All right? Realize, too, that unless you're the aggressor in a fight... This other person has brought some of the pain that they're going to receive upon themselves. Somebody that tries to mug you has made this decision in their life. Rather than getting a job and earning money in a legal fashion, they've decided to commit crimes and earn money that way. So if you hurt them, it's a job risk for them. Okay? When a fireman enters a burning building, he takes a certain amount of job risk, okay? He understands that. A criminal that robs somebody takes a certain amount of job risk. He understands that. You don't need to feel bad for him. People don't go, oh no, the poor fireman. Fireman, stay here, I'll go into the building. They understand that is the fireman's job. The criminal's job is robbing people. If you beat him up, part of his job, it's the way it is. Don't feel bad about that. All right? Now, another way that you can bring yourself to peace about defending yourself. If you do everything you can to get out of the kind of argument that escalates itself into a fight. For instance, a guy bumps into you in a bar, and he looks at you, and you say, Sorry, man. It wasn't your fault. Sorry, dude. He continues to be belligerent. You say, listen, man, I don't know what this is about, but let me buy you a beer. Okay. That's twice. He continues to go on. You say, you know what? I'm just going to leave. And you start to leave. He continues to push this. Now, you've tried three times. Anything that happens after that is on him, okay? You apologize for something you didn't do. You try to make amends. You try to leave. It's on him, okay? You can have a clear conscience at that point. It's not your fault. Whatever happens to him, he was pursuing this ending. You don't need to feel bad, right? But in my opinion, you need to have all of this secure in your head ahead of time. You need to be ready and willing to defend yourself 
all the time. It needs to be there. You're not going to have time to ramp up in your head and go, okay, okay, I'm ready now, I'm ready now, okay, when somebody wants to hit you. Or somebody comes out from behind your car with a gun and says, give me the money. Or a guy in a bar throws a beer in your face, calls you a dirty name and says, what are you going to do now? You can't go, jeez, oh, I don't know if I want to fight this guy. Huh. What did I do? Did I deserve this? It's too late, man. You got to be ready. All right. So mentally prepare yourself to defend yourself. You need to have those mental preparations. Think about all this time that you spend making your body ready, training yourself in all these physical aspects. If you don't spend time training your mind as well, you will not be ready. You'll have this awesome weapon that you leave in a holster. It's no good. Train your mind. Be ready to draw when you need to. Make sure your brain is ready. Your mind, your body have to be one. All right. I'm Mr. James from Charm City Karate. Have a great day.